Hi everyone, I wanted to talk with you guys about color products today. You've probably already seen two or three of my posts. I know I post a little question about how old is the makeup in your bag, and that's if you wear makeup. But in general, whenever you open a product, it has a limited shelf life, and depending on where you're using it and what it consists of, will help you determine when it's gotta go. I'll tell you a hint, if it's liquid and or a cream, it's gonna get old fast. If it is dry and it's not something you necessarily put on your face or near an important orifice like your eye, uh, you have a little bit longer time to use it, such as like an eyeshadow or a blush versus an eyeliner or a lip gloss. And the reason is because wet things tend to grow bacteria faster. And I, you might recall I used to be a lab tech, so I know all about germs. I uh, used to grow them in Petri dishes, so I think I know a thing or two about this. If you don't believe me, I have at least two and a half years working in food sciences where all I did was count microbes growing on rotting meat. That is not a story I want to share with you, but just understand I've paid my dues. I know what I'm talking about. And we have things on our bodies, the like critters, and that's what we call the fauna. And then there's a the flora, which is the like bacteria and stuff that help protect you. And then there's stuff that's not so great, which is of course makes you sick. But I was telling you before about eye mites. You know, when you wear your mascara and you don't take it off before bed and you're thinking, oh yeah, that won't be a problem. And then you realize it's going to be a problem because in the morning your eyelashes are all goopy and you see that some of your eyelashes are falling off. Ugh, I know, gross, right? Well, it's because you did not take your Frank and eye makeup off and the eye mites had a buffet while you were sleeping and chewed off all the makeup and probably dislodged your eyelashes in the process. This is not funny or fun. I know I laughed, but I shouldn't. I want you to understand that my intent is not to scare you, but to teach you. I want you to feel educated. That's an important thing. You need to be informed and take better care of yourself. I apologize. I got a little sun coming in, so I'm trying to aim the camera, not at the sun, but also so you're looking at me and not my window and everything else behind me. So I'm gonna to talk to you very briefly about cleaning your equipment. Before we ever talk about color products, we're gonna talk about cleaning your equipment. But uh, since I mentioned the eye mite thing, and I'll demo this later with eyeliner. Actually, why don't I do it now? I'm gonna put some eyeliner on my hand and then I'll show you how awesome our oil-free eye makeup remover is at removing said makeup off of your skin in a gentle and easy way. This is eyeliner, you'll see it later. Hi, Sherry. I'm trying to wave and react, but it's hard to do when you're teaching. Just trust me on that. And I just realized, I had an aha moment. There's a little window on the side of this where I can see how much I have left of the product. Duh. But this is just an eye pencil. And of course, now I go and cranked it down too much. So you're drawing on your hand. Now I pick the oldest one that I probably need to throw away. I'm going to do it with liquid liner. Let's, let's get bold or gel liner. I think that'll get the point across better. Anyway, I don't usually use these pencils. I love the eyeliner, um, liquid liner myself, but this is the gel liner. It comes in a jar. You'll see it later. It will make appearance. It's got a little collapsible brush, but the point I want you to see is I'm putting something on that's not meant to come off readily. See? Jar of stuff. Yeah, the stuff's still good. Very gooey. So you can draw a line on your hand. Well, we'll make it a smiley. I'm not good at drawing, so this is going to look like a little kid drew on my hand. Hello, smiley. I'm gonna give it a moment to dry. And I'm gonna show you something really cool about our oil-free eye makeup remover. It's oil-free because we don't wanna put oil back in our skin because that'll clog the pores. It's two-phase because it's going to show you it's a waterproof and regular makeup removal. I gotta open this carefully so you can see. See there's this little line here? Watch what happens when I shake it. It's like salad dressing, you know? It's mixed together. Now, when I put this, on a cotton round. Bear with me a second, because I've got like stuff all over the table. I'm going to now have a wet cotton round with eye makeup remover. And you're gonna watch this come off really easy. Gentle, easy, like it's coming off and I'm barely rubbing. Not bad, huh? So this is safe for contact lens users. So you don't have to worry about if you accidentally get a little in your eye, don't put it in your eye. But if you accidentally get a little in your eye, it's not the end of the world. Flush it up a little saline, you'll be fine. So let me throw that away, because that is gross. And we'll come back to that later when I need to demo more color product. If I make any mistakes, that is like the magic eraser. I love that stuff. And um, 
So I was talking about cleaning your products. Well, you clean your face first. You always want a clean face when you're putting on makeup and you want to make sure you clean your face when you take off makeup. We talked about the Skin Invigorate brush yesterday and the cleanser, but you don't want to use cleanser near your eyes. So I wanted to make sure I covered that. Other than that, let me think. Oh yes, I'm getting a little sidetracked. Cleaning equipment. You talk about brushes. I have the brush set here, the lovely brush set. It's a used brush set. That's why it's goopy. Now you're like, oh, well, that's kind of gross. Yeah, well, we have a brush cleaner. And I like to use these little wipes that you get at Sally Beauty, but you can use any paper towels. Just these are gentler. And they used to be wet, and they've dried out. So what I've been doing to make life out of lemons out of lemon, lemonade out of lemons. I can never get that saying right. I don't know why I'm taking my glasses off. This is half of the gimmick. Rose-colored glasses, get it? So I'm going to spritz the cloth or any tissue. Oh, it looks good on camera. I should do that more often. And then I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to clean it. Ah, smudger. That one gets a lot of dark colors. So I'm going to just gently rub and it's coming off. Now you could also spritz the bristles directly. It would not hurt the brush. These are synthetic. But I find the problem is then they take forever to dry. You want to be able to use this right away. This is basically a cleaner slash quick sanitation. You're not going to completely disinfect, but this is great for just a quick clean. Now, let's say you have more time on your hands and you have a little bit of money to spend at Amazon. You buy yourself one of these cleaning kits. It's got a little bowl, you put a little teensy bit of water in it, you put a little bit of brush sanitizing cleaner in it, just a little, a few drops, because it's concentrated and we're diluting it. And I'm gonna take the brush and we're gonna put it onto this battery operated spinner. And we're gonna get it in there. You don't need a lot, keep in mind, this is gonna spin, so we don't want a full bowl. Let me hit the button. And now it's spinning around the brush, cleaning it. Granted, I just wiped it clean, but there's still gonna be some dirt and debris and oil and other crud on this brush end. But then what you do is you lift it up inside the bowl and let it dry. Now that's genius, I wish I thought of that. So this means you can use your brush right away instead of waiting like an hour or day to use it. Yeah. It's still a little damp, but I can use this brush now, and I will later today. I'm going to be doing a color demo at 6.30. I figured I'd break this thing into two and would talk equipment first and then would demo equipment when I don't have sun blaring in the window. Plus, I was going to put up two looks and have you guys pick which one you want to learn. I think that'd be kind of fun. So now I have a nice clean brush. You can see it's no dirt, no debris. I know the camera's going to autofocus. Just trust me, but this is a now smells nice too, clean brush that I can then use. So I go through all of my equipment whenever possible, once a week-ish, sometimes more frequently if I'm doing a lot of makeup tutorials and I clean my brushes. Now you could use baby shampoo. You could use um, like, what is it, Dawn or Joy. One of those, the, the blue heat dish soap. You know what I'm talking about? The kind I use to get the oil off of the animals after the oil spill in um, Alaska. That is a very gentle cleaner, great for cleaning and disinfecting your brushes. And in the end, what I found is you can never go wrong with cleaning your brushes once a week. I mean, you give your face a day off, you take a day off for whatever you worship, Sundays or another day of the week. Give your makeup brushes a day off. Sometimes it's nice to just go clean face. Now, I'm taking this off so you can see my face. I want you to see this face is not perfect. There are things I would like to perfect or change. And I think that skincare is a necessity, but makeup is an accessory. So how do we use makeup to improve areas of my face I would like to make better? Well, there's something called contouring. So I posted a link earlier in the CC cream and foundation section to foundation match yourself to the right shade. So I know what shade of CC cream and foundation I am, but you actually want to contour. I believe I was taught you want to contour before but I like to put a base of CC cream and foundation down and then contour and since we only have so much time today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the base now and then we're going to do the color look later and that will save us some time. I also want to point out about eyebrows because that's a thing. Oil mattifier I know I'm giving you a laundry list here that's way longer than it needs to be but there's prep if you want to look perfect, and I'm not saying perfect as in better than everyone else, but like your version of perfect. It, you know, you determine what that is. And with color, it can be a very natural and a very neutral look, or it can be a little more evolved. 
And I feel like a lot of times we make it more complicated than it needs to be. And it's no wonder people get frustrated. They're watching these YouTubers doing these amazingly crazy involved things. And then you wonder why you get frustrated. So I'm going to teach you stuff that you can do, that you can duplicate. That's good for you specifically and makes you look and feel your best. That is how I feel makeup works. It's an excess... Yeah. Augmentation, that's the word I was looking for. It's an augmentation of your own natural beauty. So let's start with some basics. We talked about foundation primer earlier on one of my posts. This is what I call the pothole filler. You put a little bit on, it's clear, you massage it into the area that you know you want your foundation to stay put. I actually put it on my lips. My nose is an area where foundation does not like to play nice. My forehead, I don't want it on my eyebrows. I'm kind of going around the eyebrows. And I have something else specific for the eye area. But you might want to put a little on the lower eye because I will be using an under eye corrector. Remember ring finger. So that that will fit on your face better. This happens to be SPF 15. Not that it's the greatest level of protection, but it's a little bit of sun protection. And um, it helps keep your makeup on. It helps minimize transfer, but it also... It doesn't clog your pores. Everything's non-comedogenic. It sits on the surface. And what I think is kind of interesting is it helps everything wash off easier at the end. Again, we're washing off at the end of the day, right? I mean, you should be. And we have eye primer. I didn't picture this in any of our uh, promotional ads, but I just one I like to use. With our Chroma Fusion eye colors, you don't need it. But with our liquid colors, they don't have a primer. So since I'm going to demo both, I'm going to put eye primer anyways. And you might know it's white. Now, it doesn't really help you as much if you have a darker skin tone because, well, actually it might, but the idea is it's to lighten and brighten this area here so that the color looks a little more bold. And again, so it doesn't clog your pores and um, it is easy to wash off. So it's a little lighter, a little brighter, but if you have dark circles like I do, you can actually go over that with the under eye corrector or a concealer. And I can show you how you can either mix it with your foundation or not. It's only a preference. So I have here the, oops, I've, Get my under eye corrector. Under eye corrector is a little peachy because it's supposed to kind of compensate for the dark circles here. The concealer I have is light beige for any blemishes. I get a little bit of maskne periodically. I have my medium to deep. No, well, I'll do light to medium today. I'm still not quite tan enough yet. I have light to medium and medium to deep. I think we're going to go with light to medium. Medium to deep is like later in the summer. Foundation. And then, of course, we have, I'm going to be using beige N190 Luminous. TimeWise 3D foundation. I also use the matte sometimes, but now that we're getting into the warmer months, I want the luminous because I need a little glow. I'm a little dried out over the winter. But if you're oily, we have oil mattifier. This can go on on top of makeup. It usually actually works better on top of makeup. Because <coughs> you have an extra oily area, so like powdering your nose, but it's with this stuff. And it kind of reminds me of, whoop, a, little, a little too much came out, but I just want you to see it. It's creamy, but it's not as thick as the primer. I think I ate a dust bunny, but it reminds me of the silkiness of the, um, <coughs> pardon me, I should have a water, of the uh, primer. And the idea is you put it in your more oily places on your face to help mattify and minimize shine. So like the top of my nose can get a little shiny. And so is part of my forehead. I would use it there, but ideally it would be after foundation. But again, you could put it before or after and it wouldn't hurt things any. Uh, along those same lines, I'm looking for a particular tool here. I got all these things in this bag. I grabbed it to bring it upstairs because I didn't want to work out of my office where it was all stuffy. We talk about eyebrows. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I wanted to show things before I use them so that I can just use them quickly and I'm keeping an eye on the time. So you see I have a little bit of sparse patches and eyebrows. While we have a lash and brow building serum, if you need immediate results, there is the Precision Brow Liner and the volumizing brows tint. So depending on how what color your eyebrows are, you would match the right shade to you. And there's several shades and I keep fixing my hair because I'm trying to see my eyeballs up close and it's kind of tricky because I'm looking at the camera and then I'm looking over here. But you do like little brush-like motions and you draw kind of to fill in the color. I'll do one eyebrow and not the other so you can see the difference at first and then I'll go back later and fix the other eyebrow. So you're already seeing an improvement. It's not like it's a thick, solid line. It's little stripy lines, little dotted lines. And you might be asking me, where am I supposed to put this pencil? Great question. I always use this rule. Follow along your nose, go through the middle of your eye to the outside corner while still touching your nose, then the outside corner of your eye. See how it makes a nice little arc? 
Then if you feel you need it, there's this, but I usually take a moment before I add this and I use the brush slash bleh, eyebrow eyeliner brush. So it's got two ends. This is just so it doesn't get crushed. See, it's really thin in this woolly end. So I comb out a little bit. Sometimes I use this right before trimming my eyebrows. Often I go get them threaded. I'm a little hesitant to get them waxed. I once got burnt, it wasn't funny. So I decided it was better to just get them threaded. That way, if they only yank out a couple of hairs, that's not a lot of pain. And in the end, I think it works out better for, for both the threader and myself because no one gets kicked. This is a spoolie brush with really tiny, like really tiny. It's auto focusing, sorry. And I'm going to just, again, areas that I feel are a little more sparse. I'm going to clean that up later. I think I put too much on. You can oftentimes clean your brush a little bit here, get the excess off before you go to town here. And you can actually go back through with that brow tool and, and clean up and, and kind of organize your eyebrows. I know, such a big word, organizing your eyebrows. And I now have to clean up what I put on here. And the reason I'm doing my brows before foundation is so I can clean up any boo-boos before the foundation goes on so that this way I'm not um, painting over my foundation and then having to remove my foundation. But look how nice and crisp that eyebrow looks. This one, not so great. Now I'll tell you, you don't have to be identical. Eyebrows are sisters, not twins, got it? They don't have to be identical. Give me an eye on time. And let's see here, now I'm gonna put the foundation on. We have several tools we can use depending on the level of coverage you want. If you are into light coverage, you wet down this little sponge, little bender sponge. It gets to be about twice the size and you can just put your color on. I'm not gonna do that today, I just brought it for show because I don't have a ton of water. Then you have your liquid foundation brush, which is my favorite. And then probably my next favorite is our blending brush. This is probably the most coverage. It's, you can't see it, but this is a very dense, very soft, like a pussy willow. Almost looks like a toothbrush brush. This is gonna give you much thicker cover. So oftentimes I'll start with CC cream with this and then I'll go to foundation with this to really finish the look. So let me show you those. Let's see here we have, I'm trying to keep track of what I've used already. The under eye corrector is this one. It doesn't have any words at the bottom, just number. And so I'm gonna put a dot and I'm gonna use my, I have a, a cream color brush or a liquid product brush that I use. And um, it's the older style, but the newer style works just as nice. I'm making sure I'm grabbing the right thing. These are also due to be washed. And I'm gonna, what they call stipple, I'm gonna pat. So I'm not streaking this color across. Now I have dark, deep set eyes, so I tend to wanna take care of the shadow in the corner. And I do a little bit of a wet brush across because I'm gonna put eyeliner on later, so I don't have to go crazy. It's this area here that I'm darkest. We'll be blending this in, and now this could also be put on on top of the CC cream or not. It's really your choice or a foundation, but you gotta remember to blend later. But notice how much brighter this eye is now than this eye. Can you see what I'm talking about? Like now that the sun's not across my face? Yes, it makes a big difference. It makes you look awake and feel refreshed. I can also use this brush. I don't like to put the applicator on my face for this because it's always too much, so I'm getting a little bit. And we're gonna lightly cover up those blemishes, and then we're gonna go over that with the CC cream. So mind me, I get a little close and personal here. And boom, they all disappear. Pretty cool, huh? I know. This is said, this is just to augment already natural beauty. We're not changing me, we're not making me better or worse. We're just taking time to bring out the best. And while I'm thinking of it, before I forget, I have some limited edition stuff I will be using today to highlight and contour later when I do color. But in case I don't show it to you on camera, I wanted to be sure I had them handy. These are various color correction. We've got green that knocks out redness, so if you're like really ruddy. If you have more yellow dull patches, we have a purple. They're limited edition, but we have them for now. I have them in stock. Then there are, I think, three shades, but I can't find it. There's at least two shades of um, contour. Shade one and shade two. One's lighter, one's darker. I would use shade one, not two. And then there's a highlighting one that's called rose gold. It's so cute. It could almost be like a lipstick or an eye color. You know what I mean? And these all crank up, by the way, by the bottom here. They're like big kid crayons. So when I get into color, if you see me using this and I forget to mention it, and I have the limited edition like holiday mini blenders. 
and I've used those with those products so they each have a different color on them. Uh, but you could use the uh, bigger blender in the same way. It's just this I try to use for foundation and the other one I use for other products. So again, some people like to contour with liquid. Some people like to contour with mineral powder. We have a uh, pressed powder. We have a mineral powder foundation. We have a cream to powder foundation and we have the CC cream and the liquid foundation. So we have a lot of choices when it comes to layering and building and doing your color. So right now I'm going to put on some of the light to medium. Since I've been doing half my face, I'm going to stick to that because this is weird, but why not, right? Then you can kind of see a better before and after. So I'm just putting the CC cream basically uh, everywhere and I'm going in multiple directions with the brush. I don't care because I just want to make sure I finish in a downward stroke so we don't get that Chewbacca bushy colored look, uh, bushy hair look, where it's like, I've been electrocuted, my hair standing on end, that kind of thing. So yes, yeah, so I've got to remember that I'm putting makeup only on one side. This is going to be weird, but it's only you and me and the camera. I'm not going out anywhere. I already went to church this morning, so that's the good thing. I don't have to worry about looking weird at, uh, in front of anybody. But I'm willing to do it for you so you can see the difference. Now, I could just go out the door with eyebrow and CC cream and be fine. But look how much more even my color is. Again, we're going to block the sun out. I'm going to see if this, I have a mirror here with the light on it. Let's see if this makes any difference. Nope, I'm just getting more reflection. <laughs> so we're going to turn that off and save that for a nighttime demo. Off. There we go. It's nice to have a mirror. It's not working in this situation. So we've played with the CC cream. I'm just going to put this brush back. And now I'm going to show you how this brush works with the foundation. This CC cream adjusts to your skin tone and this Until a Match foundation does too. So I had to kind of figure out what my shade and undertone was. But it still will adjust a little bit according to my skin. So I'm not going to go super heavy at first. You get a lot of expression lines that thankfully go away when I stop making faces. But it can be an issue if you have fine lines. You don't want a makeup that makes you look super matted because then the fine lines stand out. So this is why Illuminous is great for us girls who are pushing, oh, uh, well, I'm 46, but, you know, we're supposed to push 50. That's something to think about. We don't have to switch to Luminous, but if your skin's very dry, I would not recommend using a matte foundation too much. So, again, this is weird only doing half my face. I'm just going over the whole face with this brush. And I'm dealing with a little glare, but always remember to wrap down around your chin a little bit because your face does not stop there and neither does your skin. And, you know, you get a little lighter underneath because you kind of have some shading, shadowing, uh, shade from the sun. And, of course, you get a natural shadow there, but you don't want your foundation to stop. And it should match your neck. When we foundation match, we actually kind of look at here, here, and here. We want to make sure across the board our color looks good. And it's interesting because I'm realizing as I'm previewing over on the corner here, you're seeing a lot more of me. I'm only seeing just my head in the box. So I'm glad you can see my neck because I didn't realize you can see my neck. That's great. Uh, weird, but great. And let's see here. I only have so much time and I will do the color look, as I said, at 630. So um, I can show you some colors to pick from or I can just pick them for you guys and you can just accept it. Uh, <laughs> I know that's horrible, right? There is this really cute compact. I'm going to try to remember to post up the compacts, but I only have so many posts today, so it may have to wait. But there is a full-size, huge pro palette that holds, like, everything we make. Ah. And, yes, that's something I put in there myself because there's no mirror. And that's how I know all the colors that we have because I would never be able to memorize them all. There's a medium-sized compact that looks like this, except does not have a decal. My friend made this for me with her Cricut, and now I'm wearing the letter K of Kristen off. But it has this rose design. It holds a whole bunch of stuff and has a mirror. And then the last one is something that's called the Petit Palette. It holds four shadows. Now, these are all magnetic, so your stuff doesn't fall out. Check this out, right? And this is just a preview window. But I was thinking I might use some of these limited edition colors for a really fun look. We'll see. Uh, I might do something more neutral. But I wanted you to see these in case I forget to mention them because it is such a cool thing. If someone hosts a color makeover party with her friends or session or whatever we're calling them nowadays... Um, she can earn that for free and then fill it half off, which I think is kind of a fun way to get some product without having to make your friends buy anything, because I don't know about you, that's always awkward. Um, anyways, we're going to just do a little bit of uh, contouring now that we've got the foundation on, and then I'm going to stop the video here, and we'll go back to doing color later. 
Uh, we also had some, I don't actually think I have many more of these, so I don't know why they're still in demo bag, but we had these limited edition cream blush duo sticks, and the idea was that you contoured on one side, and then the other side was your highlight. So just FYI, I may have one or two of these still left, which is why they're probably still in demo bag. But we're going to use the shade two, and we're going to use the rose gold today. So let me get out the blenders that I used with those two colors. And we're going to do a little, little bit of contouring and highlighting. Now, normally I put my blush somewhere around the temple down towards the nose. I stop two fingers before the nose. I do not go below the ear. And I don't want its big red circle. I don't want a stripe either. So when I'm putting contour, I'm looking for the shallow of my cheek. You know, we make a fish face and it looks crazy drawing stripes on your face. Trust me, it's not this bad. For me, for ideal places to contour is like a, a like a, a number three. So I kind of would come down here and then back down like here. I mimic the shadow. I might try to shade a little bit on the side of my nose to make a little bit narrower. Um, I might brighten here with the highlighter. And along the tip of the nose. And in the forehead area where I would normally be a little brighter and maybe even here in the shadow of my chin. So remembering where I put the pen, I now have my blending squares, uh, uh, sponges. So I would blend this in on top of that foundation. Now I know I didn't go over here, but I couldn't help it. I just thought a habit went across. And I'm going to have to check it against a mirror because I can't really see <laughs> with the sun as it is right now if I got it all. So don't mind me, a little extra branding there. And now we're going to go back to the contouring and blend in. And this is the lighter shade. That's crazy. I should probably, you know, maybe use powder on another side of my face. Maybe I'll do that on the left side. We'll see. But there, got to remember to blend. It's the trick here. A little sunlight I can see here as I forgot to tweeze. But anyways, now you might not be able to see it right away. But if done correctly, this side looks thinner. At least you can see more of a to the face. And it's just drawn on. It's not really there. So there is something to be said for knowing how to use contour in such a way that it brings out a more flattering version of your face without necessarily changing you the person. You're, you're not changing. You're just changing your appearance a little. So I'm putting on a hat. You're not changing yourself, you're just changing your appearance. So, we've done a basic half of the face with a little foundation, a little contouring, with a little eyebrow. And now, we are going to have to say goodbye. And I will see you at 6.30 when I'll teach you a basic color look. I may do the other side of my face, I haven't decided yet, we'll see. And I want you to see how I use color brushes, eyeliner, mascara, finishing powder, and anything else that I've been mentioning in my posts. I have lip liner and lipstick. I may do a liquid lip. I may do a lip gloss. I'm trying to decide, but I'll get back to you on that. But the best part is if you check out the e-catalog, you'll notice that there are makeover looks in the catalog, like this crimson and gold. I've taught this one before. This is a fun look. And it tells you all the bits you need and then walks you through the steps. And then, of course, you can go online for other colors. Here's the Rosy Glow. I know I've taught that one before. You can always go to my VIP group to check out previous tutorials. And I also have a YouTube channel. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, so you can go there to watch some of my tutorials. Maybe I'll post that link in the comments below. But, again, I know I look lopsided. But I hope you've enjoyed looking into the world of Chris K. Rose Carol and my K. Rose Carol colored glasses. I know that's a really difficult phrase to say. And as I said, I'll check in with you guys at 630 and I will show you a color look that's quick and easy to apply. And I hope that you found this entertaining and fun. Have you been enjoying visiting with the other vendors and doing some shopping? If you have questions about products, you can always message me offline and I'm happy to answer them. Have a great day.